Let's move on to talking about six month old infants, even four to six month old infants. Generally within pediatric medicine, the consensus is that babies can start eating solid food at four to six months. So if you make it through the first four months with breast milk, fantastic, take care of yourself, take care of nutrition, get a lot of vitamin D, get in the sun, get in the sun with your baby. If you can't do that, think about how to get the best formula. There's probably better formulas out there than a mainstream formula, which I would not recommend. Again, I gave my hypothetical recommendation for what I would do. That is not medical advice. Um, I would not recommend you do that. <laughs> but if you get to four to six months, you can start giving the baby more solid food. And at that point, we really get to the meat of the issue, bad pun, which is where babies can start to legitimately eat meat and organs. And in fact, I would say that is the ideal first food for babies. This article that I showed earlier, which I will return to, corroborates that in many accounts. So let's look at this article, which I think is a great source for any parents who are interested in this. What we find is that there are many incidences of iron deficiency. So as they say here, iron requirements drastically increase around six months of age from 0.27 milligrams per day to 11 milligrams per day. In the United States, an estimated 77% of infants fed human milk have inadequate iron intake during the second half of infancy, which is six months to 12 months. That is because moms are not eating enough meat. There's so many of these nutritional deficiencies, I think that point directly to the critical nature of meat and organs for lactating moms. And so many of the deficiencies to develop suggest that women are not either feeding their babies enough meat or they're not eating enough meat themselves. So how do we get babies this increased iron? We give them meat, we give them iron rich foods. The best iron-rich foods, meat and liver. Yes, you can give your baby liver. Obviously, the dose should be pretty small. I would recommend doses of liver for babies in the grams, five grams a day, seven grams a day of cooked liver for an infant, I think would be fantastic. This is, again, where something like a desiccated organ supplement is very essential, or at least very, this is, again, something where something like a, this is, again, an instance where something like a desiccated organ supplement, like we make it hard in soil, could be really helpful. Just one capsule Desiccated organ supplements would be a very convenient way to get organs for a six-month-old baby. I've spoken about this before. It's, it's emotional for me. One of the reasons that I built Heart and Soil was for my mom and my dad, but also for my sister and her kids. And the fact that I knew that these kids may not get a lot of liver in their life. I don't even know if my sister's kids have ever had liver, but they've definitely had Heart and Soil supplements. It's easy to mix those things into other foods. You could even mix them into cooked meat. You could mix them into milk. You can mix them into applesauce. But as this article points out, from four to six months, especially in that period, and then from six to 12 months, kids don't eat a lot of food. So the food that you give them, I believe the food that we give them should be very nutrient rich. What is the most nutrient rich food? It's organs and meat. These are, and this is within the mainstream guidelines now, from 2020 to 2025, meat is considered an optimal first food. Now, fortified rice cereal is also considered an optimal first food, which is complete bullshit in my opinion. Why you'd give your kid something that's fortified or needs to be fortified is absurd, but uh, I think it's important to note nonetheless that meat is widely considered to be an optimal first food, not something that's talked about enough. Now they say um, iron is much more bioavailable in human milk than it is in other sources, but heme iron is pretty darn bioavailable. Iron in breast milk, very available. So as we can see here, there is a study called the Feeding Infants and Toddlers Study, the FIT study. Um, and it looked at families in the United States over probably 14 years, 2002, 2016. They identified iron as a commonly underconsumed nutrient relative to the dietary allowance for infants in the United States. Kids are not getting enough meat. They're just not getting enough meat. Goes on to talk about the importance of zinc well, where do we get zinc? We get bioavailable zinc from things like liver and meat or heart, all of those things. They suggest meats, beans, and zinc fortified infant cereals. Well, these authors are off base here wildly because beans are very poorly available sources of zinc. And there is a really interesting study, which I will show in a moment, showing that if you give someone oysters, which are a great source of zinc, their zinc levels in the blood go up. But if you give those oysters with beans, the blood levels of zinc are massively reduced. If you give those oysters with wheat, specifically a tortilla and beans, the oysters will not lead to any 
zinc absorption in the human body. So beans and wheat, grains, beans are fantastic ways to bind up that zinc and make it very poorly bioavailable. Any infant or toddler trying to get zinc or any other real mineral nutrient by eating beans is not going to get any of it. This is really scary stuff. This study needs to be talked about a lot more. Studies on the bioavailability of zinc in man, absorption of zinc from organic and inorganic sources. You can see on the second page, this is the change in plasma zinc micrograms per deciliter when someone eats 120 grams of oysters alone, 120 grams of oysters plus 120 grams of frijoles, beans, and 120 grams of tortillas, zero. So tortillas, beans will massively decrease the bioavailability availability of zinc. You cannot quote mineral amounts in grains, nuts, seeds, or beans without considering the bioavailability of those minerals. This is widely misunderstood within mainstream society. And there are many sources on the internet that would say that beans are a great source of zinc or Lentils are a good source of iron, none of which is bioavailable. This is a travesty and it's very misleading for so many people and that is scary. So where do kids get zinc? They get it from meat and organs. Again, a little bit of liver, five, 10 grams a day, small amount of liver, less than half an ounce. An ounce is 28 grams, a little bit of meat. And you can cook the meat, you can grind it up, you can make it into a pudding, you can do all kinds of things with it uh, to make it palatable for those kids. I love this. Furthermore, studies show infants accept red meat, such as pureed beef, just as well as infant rice cereal as a first complementary food. No shit. But only 10% of 12 to 24 month old toddlers ate beef. This is why our kids are fatter, more insulin resistant, more unhealthy. It's super sad. So compared with other meat sources, such as poultry, lamb, and pork, or other protein sources of seafood, nuts, beans, and soy. Red meat, such as beef, is higher in iron, zinc, choline, B12, and B6. And guess what? You want your kid to get something like riboflavin, give them some heart, or give them some desiccated heart. But here's the deal. When you look at this stuff, in this article, they talk about the fact that most kids are just eating chicken. I'm scared to think that it's probably chicken nuggets. Or they're eating fish, or they're eating turkey or lamb. They're not getting beef. But this is where the nutrients are. This is really the ideal first food for infants.